Hello everybody and welcome back to ETS2. So yesterday what we did is we bought the brand new lorry. We've got the Scania just here with its updated number plate, 67 reg. So brand new, straight out of the factory uh, just here. So, well, is it? No, dealership I should say. Straight out of the dealership. And what we're going to do is customise it first of all today, which will probably take some time. So if you don't want to see that, just skip forwards and then we'll do some form of delivery. I don't know if it's going to be a heavy cargo one, special cargo. I hope it is. But, yeah, just because of where we are, we might not be able to. Because I don't think, I, I can't say for sure, but I don't think you can do it in Italy. Um, I don't think you can do the special cargo in Italy. So, yes, we'll just go and put some strobes on it and stuff. Fully customise it and all that. And then we'll uh, be out on the road and do a quick job. So if I just go over here. I'm going to upgrade shop. And we'll see what we can do. Now... We do actually have quite a bit of money to play with. I don't want to be changing so much stuff that we run out of money entirely, because that would just be foolish, but we, we can do quite a bit here. I can't be changing that, though. I've just... Yes. There we go. Uh, so, yes, uh, I did put the 6x2 axle on yesterday. Now, I know a tag lift is probably the best, but you can get more things beyond level 12, or level 12 onwards. So I think for the time being, I'm going to stick with what we have here. No point really wasting any money upgrading it twice. So I'm very happy with the 6x2 just for the time being. It will be changed in the future. The engine is a DC13148 450 horsepower Euro 6 engine, which again is the most that we can actually have in this lorry at this stage. We'd have to go up to uh, level 12 to be able to get the next one, then all the way up to level 25 to get the biggest. We then have the gearboxes, and again, we've got the best one available to us. So that's all perfect. So what we're going to be doing mainly today is interior and exterior modifications rather than um, the mechanical side of things. So the reason why I went for the UK, um, some people did ask me yesterday, the reason why is because I, I'm just used to uh, the UK setup, driving on the right-hand side of the vehicle rather than left-hand drive. Um, I know we're going to be doing most of the driving in Europe anyway, so it might look strange to do this, but... It's just what I find comfortable, so hopefully it doesn't bother anybody too much. So yeah, that is all very nice indeed. Um, I don't think there's anything else I want to do here. It's all pretty good. So again, the paintwork is all perfect. So it's just going to be accessories for external and internal. We'll start with external. I think it would be the, the wisest idea. Beacons aren't available until at least level 12. Oh dear. That's not, that is a bit of a shame actually, because we really do need to have a strobe or something for the special cargo. I don't think we're far off level 12 actually. What are we on? Level 11? I thought we were on 12. Hmm, not sure. Anyway, um, we might be able to stick something on the front of here. We can. So we can put a beacon on here. That looks interesting. Is that one of those ones that just sort of flashes twice? I think it might be Pulsar as it says here. So maybe, maybe impulses. Um, I will put those on there just because uh, we, we need to have something. But it doesn't look very good, I admit. It's just a temporary measure. We then have the sun visors, which actually we can't change with this bar being here. But in the future, we will change it anyway. Uh, we can put lights in the top here, which I think we'll do. It looks very nice indeed. Hmm. I quite like the exclusive... Obviously, matching paint looks the best. They sit in there better. But for the extra price, we can't really justify that too much. So next we have, I think it's going to be, uh, yeah, co-driver's plate, which we don't actually need. Can put lamps in here. Yep, I like that. We'll stick them in there. Um, obviously, these are just things which make it look better but don't really change the performance at all. That is very nice, so I have to admit. So we'll put that in. Uh, front badge, don't think we need to bother. Um, we'll put some lights on here, I think. LED strobes. If I put some there and there, and then put that one as just a standard light. We'll take a look and see what that looks like later. Should be quite good. Stock plastic. Again, these are things which we don't actually need to have, but I think we'll upgrade them a bit. Exclusive plastic. 
stock paint and exclusive paint. Um, I can't see the, yeah, you can't really see the need in putting a 1201 in if you can put a 1440 in. Obviously, it's still 240 pounds more, but is it? There's not much point in uh, buying the stock paint and then wanting to upgrade later. We'll go straight for the top. Down here, we have got a bar for the bottom, which actually I'm not too keen on. So I think we'll remove that. Again, these things here, they don't really bother me. That would be nice. That is very nice indeed. But look at the price. £5,760. Euros. Extreme. Yeah, we can live with the plastic for the time being. Exhaust. Um... Again, it's a nice feature, but do we really need it? I suppose, yeah, we could do. We'll put them there. Uh, right, okay. Ah, now that totally transforms the whole rear section. And I should think it actually protects the fuel tank as well. Interesting, I, I probably shouldn't have done that. We have to have that one then to be compatible with the exhaust. And it does, it looks very nice indeed. I suppose these Many upgrades from here are probably painted versions of that. I don't know, but I can only assume. I should think it is. That's all stock. That can be painted. Yeah, we'll do that. They can be painted too. I just really wanted strobes on the roof, and we can't even do that yet. I can't believe it. Uh, at least it's something to work towards. I'll have to work towards it later. This adds a lot of money, so we'll stick with standard for the time being. Likewise... Bit of money. Maybe we can put them on there. Yeah, so I think I might keep that as it is. I think there's going to be many more upgrades in the near future. But we can't just go crazy straight away. I still don't understand the bitten sandwich for a thousand euros. It just seems so expensive. And a, a telephone for £3,660 euros. It's just extreme. These are just novelties, I suppose, really. If they were like five euros, which is what they should be, then yeah, of course, <laughs> we'll put them there. But we can spend our money in better ways. Now up here, we can have these like curtains in. I suppose we could put them in. Um, they're not too expensive, but are they nice to look at? That's the question. I'm not totally keen on them myself but I suppose they do add style I think if I was to go with one it would be this one here we can always get rid of it later yeah we've done those um, hanging down from here we could have all these charming things uh, it's just yeah novelties I suppose again a, a tennis ball we can have a tennis ball I did buy this DLC the cab interior DLC I can see why people would like them though it's just personally, I'm not so keen on them. I would say they're more of an obstruction of your view than anything else, but yeah, there you go. I suppose it takes the right kind of person to want one. This is different though. Having a laptop or something on the seat brings the place to life a bit. And yeah, I think we'll put a bag or something there. What can we have on the back of here? A light. Yes. Four and a half thousand euros just for that, but... Um, I can see the appeal for it. We'll go with it. Um, a portable sat-nav. Yes, actually. That screen there probably does show up as one anyway. But then I could close the sat-nav, which is on the screen normally. So that would probably improve things quite a bit. Otherwise, though, I think I'm quite happy with what we have here. But, yeah, we do need to do some changes in the future. Bag, go on the floor. You do not want to be on the seat. That's better. Much, much better. So in the 12 volt accessory port, nothing. Nothing at the moment anyway. Level 16 for that. Um, but you know what? I think we should probably spend our 39,000 euros and get on the road. Wow. I know the beacons don't look that good um, but yeah as soon as we can get the strobes we'll get rid of that entire front bar at the thought the top bar put it all on the roof 
To be honest, I think that would pass as a vehicle being used for oversized loads. Just about. It's on the, the bottom of the limit, I would say. Um, so, yeah, we have beacons, we have stuff. It, it looks wrong in a few ways, but as I said, just a temporary measure. So what can we do here? I need to first of all remove the satellite navigation marker and then we should be able to choose some different things. Now I'm at a bit of a disadvantage here just because I haven't really got many places explored. I did do in my previous profile but obviously on this profile we haven't even been to Eastern Europe so I do need to venture out there. I know we're supposed to be doing Italia but um, yeah I, I honestly prefer the special cargo sort of stuff. So if we can explore some more places I haven't been to yet then we can do these kind of things but at the moment they are a very long way from here. So yes if I just select, actually I check external contracts first as well but I don't think there'll be anything um, in particular. No it's just curtain side stuff and containers. Yeah a tipper, there is a tipper uh, but no special cargo because we're in Italy so there isn't anything available like that. So, I think the best thing to do is just to go back to the beginning and we will do one of the ones which goes to somewhere of interest. Yes, that would do very nicely indeed. 393 kilometers, medical equipment to Zurich, I think it is. Um, so yeah, begin delivery. Obviously we can't start off with having the best loads because we are still fairly inexperienced I would say. It's a good test for us just to be able to get used to our lorry anyway. And what I don't want to do is crash it straight away because that would be highly embarrassing. We have the sat nav so I can get rid of the other one. The only good thing about having the one on the screen which isn't even blocking the view is it tells us the time, which I suppose we can see anywhere on the dashboard. Um, but it also tells us the remaining distance, which the other one doesn't. So there are positives and negatives to having them both up. I will get rid of it. Because I know that some people might get a bit annoyed if I keep both up. So, yes, here we go. Our almost 400 kilometer journey where does it tell us the speed? ah there we go it's all analog on here right okay so yeah miles per I think I think the sound of is telling us kilometers per hour I think um, I will confirm okay it doesn't know I'd say it is. So we're at a top speed of 80 here. As we know, we're very close to our depot. Power! We have power. Uh, it does look very nice with the painted um, fenders, I would say, with mud guards. Wheel arches. Whatever you want to call them. Now, where are we going from here? Straight on still. We do have to change lanes though in a second. I like how these curtains uh, actually do react to us breaking. And just about see the traffic lights through the mirror. There we go. Right, we're going to go across here. Oh, these lights are changing on us every single time. I suppose it does give us time to appreciate the lorry. It does look weird though, this, this darker bit here. I think it probably should be painted as soon as we have the option to do so. We're stuck with the the black plastic where it could be painted the blue. Nothing like driving a brand new lorry though. Oh, 
shouldn't have gone in this lane. It is going to feel quite weird actually because we're now driving a right hand drive lorry on a road where you should be driving a left hand drive. I like the indicators. I think they're all LED. This must be our depot here. And there is our trailer. It should still have the advanced coupling enabled because I don't think that goes with the lorry, it's going with the overall game settings. Not quite aligned, I don't think. Oh, it is. Perfect. I didn't think that was aligned. Beacons and strobes. Yeah, really looking forward to doing special cargo. Or special transport, it's called actually, but. Yeah, doesn't really matter. Okay, so we're off. This is the beginning of our 400 kilometer journey. And it does already feel very different driving the right hand side lorry here. Car with a caravan. We're off. Okay, so I've just decided to stop the time up there just so I can explain a few things. Basically, um, I did get two fines then. There were two fines for speeding. The first one, fair enough, I was definitely speeding. Um, and it's only mainly because I'm still trying to get used to the uh, the setup here. Because if you've got the if you've got F3 selected, this thing here, the speed will actually go red if you are speeding. Whereas if you have it switched off entirely, then you've just got to keep an eye on your dial. And I was about, I think I was about six miles per hour over. So fair enough. Um, the second one was totally unfair. I was just slowing down. I was going to the speed limit. I was about to slow down. Um, the split second that I crossed the line where the speed signs were, I got a fine. Straight away. So that wasn't so good. Um, it would be good if there was a bit more leeway there, especially if you are slowing down anyway. Um, but no, overall, I think so far it's been alright. The other thing is, you probably noticed I did stop over at the toll booth. The reason why I stopped was because I had to change the seating position. As you can see, we can now see the mirrors. Whereas before, I was so pressed up against my steering wheel, I couldn't even see this right hand mirror. So I'm hoping that that is in a much better position now. It, it certainly suits me, so um, yeah, things should be much easier from now onwards. Still getting used to using the dial, because obviously, usually in ETS2, we're using just the digital screen. Which is funny actually, because in a car, 
I use the dial, so weird. <laughs> I don't know. Um, it's probably because it's not it, it's not as close. It's not as clear as if you're driving in real life. Because obviously, depending on the resolution of your screen, it might be a bit out of focus, and it is a bit out of focus for me, even on a 1440p screen. So um, yeah, that's probably the reason why. But I'll get used to it, especially if I maintain keeping the F3 option off the on-screen sat nav but yeah I've got no idea how much further it is to our destination I'm just guessing here the safest thing for me to do is to keep cruise control on a car let me in please do we have oh no we don't that's good we don't actually have to pull over yeah I'm sure they've changed this there used to be a time and even in the UK now on uh, ETS2 if there's a, a lane that's going to go off you have to move to the, the, the outside lane but I think they've started to get rid of those because I hate them, they really are bad um, and they're not really true to life anyway so I'm, I'm really pleased that they are fixing all of that kind of stuff whereas here actually we are indeed merging to the other side of the road merge in turn I think would be the courteous thing to do so it's always a good approach and we probably should put our lights on yeah it's all a bit of a mystery when you don't know how much further it is until our destination I could have a sneaky peek I am surprised actually it doesn't show you on the um, sat nav on the windscreen there would be really good if it did do 141 kilometers so we have actually done a fair chunk oh, we're very tired as well very tired I don't know I might keep that up in the future it's not really obstructing the view yeah I think it will do I know it does seem strange to have two sat navs but it's just good it tells you extra information and even a real sat nav in real life would tell you the ETA. Unless there is an option for this one I've got on the windscreen, maybe you can set it to show you how much further there is. That is the only thing I'm looking for, really. But I keep driving, the curtains can keep dancing, and yeah, things are going pretty well. This is a very long tunnel. extremely long. I've got to keep going until we get out of it. I want to show you how long it actually is. I've never been in it before. It must have a name with it being so long. It's 20 degrees in here though. At least we know that much. 20 degrees Celsius. Here is the end. The end of the tunnel. I hope they've got a good extraction system. The fumes will build up. Wow, and it really does open out. Impressive. Let's appreciate it. Whoa. And back into a tunnel. I suppose, yeah, it's because there's so many mountains you have to go through them. You can't really go over them. I wonder how long this one will last. If the other one is anything to go by, quite a long time. But no, there is the ending. That is the end of the tunnel. Are we now on a bridge? Yeah, I think we are. We're on a bridge. Someone's been farming down there. They have produced some bales. And there is another road as well. I wonder if you can go on that road. Probably can do. Extraction systems. Right. Back to in cab view. As you can see it reverts back to where I was. Which is very nice. Police car. We can actually increase our speed. Just... I like as well we've got the 
cruise control symbol that appears on the dashboard when I enable it. It's very useful. Just above the word pressure, above the letter R, there is the cruise control symbol. We could sleep up here, but I'm not going to. I don't want to be late. Only 63 kilometers left. I'll probably just keep the recording going actually, instead of jump cutting. Too many jump cuts don't look so good. Do we need fuel? No. If we didn't need fuel, there'd be something wrong. It would be the world's most uneconomical lorry. Actually, we've still got over... No, we've got about three quarters of a tank, pretty much. We're just cruising along at our steady 79 kilometers per hour. Looks like we're coming off up here, though. More bales. They're very big bales. Those bales are the same size as a house. Almost. We could live in a bale. Sorry, I'm looking around and making the uh, player's camera go off centre. Right, here we are. We're coming off here. 4 the final 45 kilometres, I would say we're going to be staying here. If I just press F5... Oh, it doesn't actually zoom out of the other sat-nav either. Hmm. But here we are. That is, uh, as, you, as you can see on the mini-map there, that is our destination. Virtually there. Shouldn't be too strenuous from now on. But I've got to say, very nice lorry. Certainly feels like it's got enough power. I think it can be upgraded massively from the 450 horsepower when we can do. So, it's so able to pull things with ease now, then, well, it should have no problems at all with standard cargo later, and hopefully no problems at all with the uh, oversized loads. But, we're way overdue for an oversized load, so I'm really hoping in the next episode I can do another one. I think if we can't do with our own lorry, I'm just going to have to do another one as a quick job, which would be a real shame, but we're working towards it. There doesn't really seem to be many about. They all seem to be in either Norway or France, for me at least. They probably are everywhere. But as I said, I haven't really discovered many places, so that's the problem. About down to 50. Eight kilometers left. This is where we need to be. Hmm, it did. It did about a quarter of a tank of fuel for about 400 kilometers. Sounds pretty good. And then left here. And of course the lights change on us as they do. They always do. Let's see if we can have a rolling start. Come on, come on, I'm almost at the line. I need to break. Thank you. Yes. It helps us slightly. And then right here, please don't change. Do not change on me, please. Good. And then it's going to be a left here. Brilliant. Oh, Laurie. 
That was close. Almost took out the front of my brand new lorry there. Okay. Let's get some experience points. Yep, yeah, I've done quite a few of these. They are quite tricky to reverse into because it's always very tight. But it's definitely possible. The way I've done it before is to go right up here and then sort of go straight and reverse back. It does sometimes work. Um, my bag! My bag of stuff. Yeah. Should work. forward a bit. Yeah, you can actually do that in one go. It's definitely possible. Done. Let's get about 15,000 euros in, I think it must be. It's pretty good. It is, 15,753, and look, we've just hit level 12, so now we can put the strobes on the roof. I probably should have just done that before. Um, yes, I wanted to do some more long-distance stuff, that'd be good. But there it is, a fine-looking lorry. Very fine. Anyway, thank you for watching, hopefully you've enjoyed the video, and until next time, see you again very soon. Bye for now.